The Zion First Baptist Church is committed to the teachings of Jesus Christ through Christian education, worship, exhortation, and evangelism. We're happy to have worshiping with us this morning the Reverend Dr. Philip Charles Javert, who will be our morning preacher on this fourth Sunday. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for all that you have done. We thank you, O oh God, for waking us up this morning and starting us yet on our way. You've been good, and we give your name glory and honor and praise. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. As we sing the songs of our faith, as we pray the prayers of the faithful, as your word goes out, we ask, O oh God, that you would anoint us afresh. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you, my sisters and brothers, to join with us in our morning's congregational hymn, a familiar hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus, Because He First Loved Me. Through the paths of the seas. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent. 
blasphemy is thy name in all the earth. Amen. We want to greet you and welcome you again to Zion. Thank you for joining with us. We want to remind you that next Sunday, March the 6th, is our Communion Sunday, first Sunday. And if you do not have the elements, you may contact the church office, drive by during the week to get your communion elements, or of course, as you know from our time being out, you can make your own bread or cracker of your choosing, and a juice or water of your choosing, and you, we will take communion together as we've been doing in these Sundays that we've been away from the sanctuary. I want to remind you that Lent begins March 2nd next week, and of course our Lenten journals have already been distributed to you or you'll be getting it in the mail. We want to remind you, as we've done every year for many years, to join in with us in our Lenten journey by reading each morning a devotional and then setting aside one dollar during the Lenten period. The total, of course, would be forty dollars that we join in with other churches to make an impact on missions around the world. And of course, here at Zion, you've heard a lot about that. In fact, with your partnership, we travel to some of the places where your gifts have gone. And of course, just last summer, we collected more than 3,000 tithes to send over to the pastors and men in Malawi and Zambia and Zimbabwe because of your generosity. So we ask that you join us in the Lenten season by reading a passage each morning written by pastors. Some of you know the pastors around the country. The names will be familiar to you. Reverend Dr. Jason Turner, as an example, who served here in our youth ministry before he went on to pastor the Community Baptist Church, and then finally, the Mississippi Boulevard Church in Memphis. So many names you will be familiar with. We ask that you join us in reading the Lenten Journal, putting aside your gifts. Those of you who will make a check at the end toward Easter, we ask you to just make one check to the Zion First Baptist Church for your Lenten contribution. And of course, as we've done for several years, we will send one check to So Send IU, which is the missions consortium with whom we partner. We give thanks to God for all of you and for your generosity, not just in that endeavor, but as we continue to do the work, to do the work of the kingdom here at Zion. Of course, last week was our food pantry, and we thank God for the gifts that you continue to give that were able to make an impact in Middletown and in the wider world. Let us pray. Lord, we are so thankful for your goodness, for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We thank you, O oh God, for those who have been giving to the kingdom that your work might not see any lack during this time. We thank you, O oh God, that the numbers are now decreasing and we thank God that we will soon be able to return to corporate worship we ask that you bless those who are sick and bereaved and those who are shut in. We thank you, O oh God, not just for our church, but for every church open in your name. Bless, O oh God, your people. That we might continue to do what you've commanded us to do. Forgive us, O oh God, of all of our sins, the things we've done against you and against your word, and try us, Lord, one more time. Keep us by your keeping power. Bless the preacher today and keep him, bless his ministry, anoint him with power from on high. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Our preacher this morning is not a stranger to all of you at Zion First Baptist. The Reverend Dr. Philip Charles Joubert Sr. is the pastor of the New Light Missionary Baptist Church in Norwalk, Connecticut, a great friend to our church, and we thank God for his gifts that he's been using with us, joining us in our teaching ministry here at Zion. And after the hymn of preparation, the next voice you will hear will be that of our morning preacher, Reverend Dr. Philip Charles Joubert.
being pastor of this great congregation, the Reverend Dr. Carlton Joseph Giles, my brother in the Lord. Praise God for him and the many, many gifts that he has. And thank you so much, Pastor, for the privilege to return and share a word to the Zion First Baptist Church family here in the city of Middletown, Connecticut. Greetings from the New Light Missionary Church from Norwalk, Connecticut. We are so happy to greet you and we're so happy to be here. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Gracious God and Father, we thank you for this Sunday, February the 27th, 2022, Black History Sunday. We thank you, dear Lord, for those who have gone before us and have paved the way. We ask thy blessings upon the word of God as it is proclaimed in this place today, that people would be encouraged, inspired, and instructed, we pray in Jesus' name. All the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. From the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, and verses 35 through 38. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 35 through 38, from the King James Version. Hear now the reading of God's holy word. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes from the title, Large Crop, Few Workers. Large Crop, Few Workers. We have more problems, my brothers and sisters, than we have solutions. Every church should, would love to have more workers in the ministry. What can we do when we see the large job that is out there waiting for the true child of God? Our text, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 35 to 38, tells us that there is a large crop, a large harvest, but we have few workers few persons willing to be pickers that are available. Farmers plant seeds in the ground, and then God gives them a harvest. No matter how much the farmer has, it must be harvested, or else it'll be wasted and thrown away. In our text, we hear the words of the writer in Matthew Chapter number 9, verse 35, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And Jesus healed every kind of disease and illness. Everywhere Jesus traveled, he saw harvest. There were souls in every town and in every village that needed to be taught. They needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news. In every city there are men and there are women. There are boys and there are girls that are diseased and they are infirmed. Jesus healed every disease, every kind of sickness. This world that we live in today is plagued. We have so many different 
types of diseases, if I would enumerate them, we would be here all day. But God still has that same power to heal today. The hospitals and the nursing homes, they are filled with sick people. But Jesus can heal a sin-sick soul. He can heal us physically. He can heal us mentally. And praise God, he can heal us spiritually. In this text, we find in verse 36 that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that right there where you are this morning, Jesus sees you in your condition. Not only does he see you in your condition, but he cares about you. He loves you, and he wants you to know that he is there for you. He's knowledgeable about your particular predicament. The world today needs compassionate saints. We must learn to be loving. We must learn to be sharing and gentle and kind and merciful and selfless and giving. That, my sisters and brothers, is the way of Jesus yeah. Christ. People today are walking around helpless, hopeless, and harassed. Sheep need a shepherd. We cannot make it on our own. Oh, I know you've got your education, I've got mine. Oh, I know you've got your good looks, and I think I've got mine. Amen. But let me tell you, it's more than money, education, and good looks. You need Jesus in your life. We cannot make it on our own. We need someone who can handle us and handle us with care. And I want you to know this morning that Jesus is his name. The task of the church is to handle the sick, the least, the last, and the left outs with compassion and with care. We will be successful in this area when we do it God's way and not our own way. Proceeding through the text, in verse 37, we hear the words, He said to his disciples, The harvest is great. The harvest is plentiful. The harvest is large. But the laborers, the workers, the pickers are few. Well, sisters and brothers, the decisions for Christ are plentiful. There are more folk outside of the door of our congregation that are lost than there are that are saved. I do believe that when we get to heaven, we'll see a vacancy sign blinking, a neon light saying, vacancy, vacancy, because there's plenty of good room in our Father's kingdom. The people to fill up our churches are out there. That's not the problem. The problem is we have few laborers, few workers, few people want to get their hands dirty and be involved in church work. Church members have their own agendas, crusades and Sunday church school and Bible class and evangelism on the streets and saints with the testimony teams is not their cup of tea. But here in verse 38 of the, of the text, Jesus says, so pray, pray, pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Yes. Well, the answer is to have a prayer service. Get people to pray and spend time on their knees. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. He will hear your faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Church, we need to spend time in prayer. But as I bring this message to a close this morning, I want to remind us that we need men and women, boys and girls, who will donate their time, their talents, and their tithes and offerings uh, to do the work that will bring the lost 
into God's church. If and when we pray, we will see the Lord open up the windows of heaven. Whenever you ask God for something in prayer according to his word and his will, the answer will be your own bet in your own best interest, and his hand will be upon your life. Church, it'll be evident that God is on your side. Here's the good news of the text. The exciting part of the text is there is a harvest. Say yeah, somebody, there is a harvest. We will reap what we sow. God is going to bless us. Jesus is Lord. He's the way, the truth, and the life. I heard the hymn writer say, count your many blessings. See what God has done. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. I'm glad this morning that there's a large crop and there's few workers. But one great morning, one great morning.